The Truth Commission went to the Karua this week and visited Hanwofer, De Aar and Kulsberg. The Karua is a relentless landscape. Dotted across this vast sheep farming area lie a few small towns and townships. During the 80s, the dark cloud of political violence that cast its shadow over the rest of the country also descended on the Karua. 1985 was a particularly bad year. The Truth Commission this week heard of police shootings, detentions and torture. They also heard of court cases in which those responsible were never found guilty. In this tense atmosphere, harsh punishment was meted out to those seen to be collaborating with the security forces. In the Karua, black policemen, councillors and informers were isolated and banished from townships. Some of them were burned, stabbed and stoned. On a Saturday afternoon in 1985, a few days before Christmas, a placid Karoo town was turned into a nightmare. The major conflict in Phillipstown was between UDF supporters and community councillors and policemen. What started as a war of words between a local resident, Sophie Yankee, and a municipal policeman, Simon Selingo Chemesh, ended in two deaths. Sophie was shot and killed by Simon. Revenge was swift. His father, Bokwe Gilboy Chemesh, was burnt to death that same day. Members of both families appeared before the commission. Nathal Chemesh, Selingo's younger brother, saw the tragic drama unfold. People then came. The, other were throwing, the others were throwing stones. We tried to take everybody inside because we realized we were being attacked. Simon shot twice in the air. As we were trying to get into the house, Simon Chemes was, Chemes was standing at the door. He took his gun and shot the lady Sophie. She had four wounds in her body, one at the center of her chest beneath her breasts, the other on her buttocks. The biggest, however, was on her forehead. On Sunday morning, Elsie had just returned from hospital when she was arrested. No one gave me the time of day. No one gave me the respect. No one informed me why it was that I was being arrested. I did not know what was happening. I am the one who was in pain, but still they arrested me. My daughter had been shot. I was detained up to the time when my daughter died. The only time I was released is when I went to bury my child. As I went closer, I thought that it was my brother who was being burnt, but it was my father. He was terribly burnt. Ah, uh, that was for me by a by a by a arsir. It was a by arsir story, and. Um, I was the last day in what my pa has seen it. What my pa so fear had blessed me with sand and so on. And that had me getreffed. It was very lief, my pa. Sophie's brother, Nelson Sintroche, was sentenced to 35 years for Gilboy Chemesh's death. I just got out because we got indemnity. I would still be in prison now, all because of lies. These people, the perpetrators, they are alive. What are you doing about them? My life is ruined. What are you doing about them? They were not even jailed. I could not even go to my sister's funeral. I was in detention. trying to cover up their filth together with their magistrate and their judge. I was used as a scapegoat.
shot my sister. Who is guilty? Who is guilty? Who is guilty? Who is guilty? In 1985, the tiny township of Kwezi in Hanover erupted into a war between the black local authority and the comrades. The councillors were branded traitors, and the comrades wanted them out of the township. Towards the end of the year, tension in the township had reached boiling point, and the councillors fled the township with their families. They lived in army tents on this piece of ground between the town and the township. The collection of tents became known as Izitenteni and was under constant police guard. For the inhabitants, the township had become a no-go zone. But then on Christmas Eve 1985, Tumazile Nkumbe decided to fetch some belongings from his wife's house in the township. His brother William was with him. When the comrades spotted him in the township, the police escort had already left. Then we started to run. Come to this direction, and Mr. Poison come to that direction, and he threw him. He told him to run on the left hand side, and threw him on his leg. And the collapse came, and he tried to pick to pick him up, pick him up, but he was, he was afraid that like, he got shot at, shot at. Him. I could not do anything. And then the comrades were starting to run to this to this place. They stabbed him. Policemen uh, fed some stones who were full of blood in this place. And then after that, was I was sent to the, to the court. But the main thing, he, he was dead in, in his hands. William and Kumbe insists that they would have managed to run away from the comrades had it not been for that first stone that tripped his brother. A stone, he insists, was thrown by Samson Boyson. I can't say who killed him, because that day, these are the comrades who were there in his house till, in the, till this place here. And I said that now, the only person I saw he, he threw him is Mr. Poison. And I saw it in my deepest heart. And here I was really shocked because I, I, I took him as my brother. Grow up and go in the same church. Samson Boyson was one of four people sentenced to death for the murder. They spent two years on death row before being released as political prisoners in 1992. Today he is the mayor of Hanover, but he still insists that Mr. Nkumbe falsely identified him and that he was sentenced to death for something he did not do. When he said that, let us forget what he had done. He said, no, we must forget it because we have Especially I myself, I myself, I've done nothing. My hands don't fall apart. That's why now the community of Hanover elected me as a mayor in Hanover because he knew this. And they knew that I was not there at that time. All the accused, they, they were sentenced to 18, 17 years, but today they are outside. And only God will answer. But I just want to know why did they kill my brother? The deep rifts between Mr. Nkumbe and the man sentenced for killing his brother reflect the rifts within the community of Kwezi. Both of them are grappling with ways to reconcile with each other while at the same time sticking to their versions of what happened on that day. But here, on the spot where Tomazila Nkumbe was killed, these two men, this week, took the first step towards understanding the past. Our, our fathers were working in, in the same place, in the Hanover Station. We grew as brothers. What happened? We must forget it. I can accept what, what happened. 
Not time. I can take five. 